You're watching live from the Mitchell, brought to you by the College of Saint Scholastica, with promotional support from the Current. Great music lives here. We are committed to amplifying Minnesota music to keep it independent and influential. Get closer to Minnesota music with the Local Show and the Duluth Local Show Sunday nights on the Current. This concert is funded by the Lloyd K. Johnson Foundation. Thank you for watching. Auditorium. This next song is called The Queen of the Iron Range. I was a traveler. But only one a day I brought the land I lost my way I was a wanderer Drifting through time The vision I saw Showed me the rhyme She said She's the queen of the iron race. 
Well, it's really fun to get the band back together. We don't get a lot of shows these days, but uh, the sun's going to shine again, and we're all going to get back to hanging out, dancing again. Someday the shine's going to shine. gonna shine again but I don't know when I don't know it's gonna shine again someday, someday we will meet again she's like him the film stars along the way so I'm gonna is going to
Well, we want to big, give a big thanks to the Mitchell for having us out. And uh, mark your calendars, April 3rd, uh, friends of ours, one less guest. They're going to be the next on this fun series. We're so happy to kick it off and uh, be, the, be the icebreaker, I guess, even though no ice in Duluth this year. But uh, we'll leave you with this one. And uh, it's our little song. You can watch a cartoon on the YouTubes. It's called Big Voice. Thanks so much. It's nice to hear some real people out there. You're watching Live from the Mitchell, brought to you by the College of St. Scholastica, with promotional support from The Current. Great music lives here. We are committed to amplifying Minnesota music to keep it independent and influential. Get closer to Minnesota music with The Local Show and The Duluth. Welcome everyone to the first show in the Live from the Mitchell series. My name is Brittany Lind. I am host of the Duluth Local Show on The Current, and I'm here with Woodblind. And we just heard the first set of the evening, and now we're going to sit down with Woodblind and hear more about the band and their new album, Bluebird Day. So for those who are tuning in and hearing you for the first time, how would you describe Woodblind? And because this set isn't 
the same as your like normal quote unquote setup. Can you describe what's what's happening right here? What are we seeing right now? Well, we normally perform as a duo, uh, but um, a lot of times we like ska bands are more traditionally larger with horns and percussion and multiple guitars. And sometimes we like to pull a, a, a larger band. Duluth has a lot of really great musicians, Jimmy Cooper, Eli, Tyler Dubla, Lefty, all the really great players. And um, for this, we wanted to include them so you can hear, you know, we write the songs, we hear the songs as you heard, just heard them, but sometimes we write them just as a duo. <laughs> in the garage. In the garage, in my garage. <laughs> and then if we can, you know, sometimes it's a budgetary constraint. Uh, but when we can have people have a larger band, we will add that as we can. We love the big band. Yeah, this, trust this is our favorite band and reggae fest two years ago. It seemed like last year, yeah, it sure does. anytime we can get this group together, this is the band we want to play with. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what we play is ska, which, uh, people ask us, well, what is ska? Ska is the music from the Caribbean and Jamaica, more particularly, that occurred between Calypso and Reggae. So from like the late 50s to the mid 60s is when Ska was predominant. Um, what I would like to tell people is if you know any of the old James Bond movies, think about the movie Dr. No. And that yeah. was the period. There's a, a Ska version of Three Blind Mice in the beginning of that. So that'll give you kind of a time frame when this was really popular. But like a lot of styles, it, it travels and grows. And there are a lot of elements of what we do as Calypso. A lot of them are, some of the elements are reggae or dub. Um, sometimes we even there's even some Americana. I think well, it's we, a lot of polka because yeah. I'm all German. So <laughs> yeah, I think true. it's like ska so, is like kind of so, like polka. In that in that case, we call it Americana. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But but we love what we do. We love playing music. We love writing songs. We or, love this band, and we I'm so happy to get to record our album with them with rich and sparta and uh yeah that's where we recorded up at rich madison's place up in sparta which was a really great experience i've been pretty lucky in my career to work with lots of interesting people and this really was the funnest uh, recording project we did we kind of a chase everybody kind of beat feet get in front of a blizzard we got there set up started recording and then there was a blizzard so we literally recorded the album during a blizzard and we cooked jason and i cooked for everybody and <laughs> we, it was a really of great time. Everybody had a really fun, you can tell in the recording, it was, you know, it was a special experience for all of us. That is definitely a story from musicians from Northern Minnesota talking about yeah. <laughs> wanting to record an album. Yeah. Yeah, there was a blizzard, we got yeah. snowed in. <laughs> and we, we had fun. players to get to the studio. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and Rich and Jermaine were really super, they have a really great studio. It's really well set up to record and I think it was an old church. So where the chapel was is now the recording studio with an isolation booth and like the day room, there's a small kitchen and it was, we all stayed there overnight. It was really fun. It was really a chance to get to bond with everybody and hang out and, uh, you know, get to share a really unique, a uniquely Northern Minnesota experience to actually record an album <laughs> in the middle. Of, I think we had like a foot and a half of snow that it night or something. It was awesome. <laughs> it was great. So, Classic. Yeah. yeah. So you released this album during the middle of a pandemic, but during the summer, which meant that people could actually be around each other as long as they were outside. So what was it like to release an album during the pandemic versus say how your past album release shows have gone? Well, we, we kind of, you know, we really were really tormented about whether we should, because it was done for a while and we had planned a, like an early May release and then, you know, all this happened and we didn't want to let the pandemic stop us or getting our music out. So we figured that well, let's just do it anyways. We're kind of releasing it digitally anyway. So, you know, we really didn't get to do any support tours or anything like that. I think it was fun too, though, because we did it in the parking lot and we had two nights and people came out and yeah. there's a torrential rainstorm and everyone stayed and yeah. it, oh, I don't know. Right. Yeah, it was just like, well, you're just making new memories and yeah. it's everyone is in the same boat. Everyone's having a hell of a time with trying to figure things out. So we are too. And, yeah, so and, it, and sometimes, it's all good. sometimes it's the tough times that you remember more than the easy times in life. 
I know that's true in my my experience. And it was still so great because we hadn't played with the band since March. Yeah. That was the first show that we got to play with all our friends that we just played with in the first set. This was our first show since March in was our CD release. Yeah. But I would say tonight's show is the first time we played with our friends almost in since, many, many months. Since, since at least since then. Yeah. It's like there's really no shows and people aren't getting together and you're not even having rehearsals. So, I mean, me and Vaco still get together. I, we're, we're in a bubble apparently. And we still <laughs> hang out in Vaco's garage and start a fire and write tunes and goof off. And, yeah. but do it's really love. great to get the whole band together and, yeah. and do, do the big show. It's fun. Yeah. Okay. It's nice to, like so we, we write these songs together and when we write them, we can hear them with a fuller band, you know, they can be played as a duo or they can, you know, some of these things I've envisioned with an orchestra, if we could afford it, <laughs> I'd love to do that someday. Uh, but yeah, he's right. It's just nice to get out. Never say die. You, you know, the sun is going to shine again someday, no matter how dark it seems. Exactly. That's, so that's, sp- go ahead. speaking of your, your bubble, I heard a little something about something you like to call soup and a song. <laughs> could you tell us about soup and a song? Because I don't know what that is, but it sounds like something I'd be into. Well, uh, we've been toying with this idea for a long time, actually. As well, Faisal you know, was the soup guy. At, at, when, when, <laughs> we're both soup guys. People don't know, but Jason owns a really great coffee shop in West Duluth. You should come on by. <laughs> Who's this concert cafe? <laughs> <laughs> so we would think, well, what can we do? Because we're not really playing shows, but we want to keep our creative energy. Because Jason and I like to create. We, just, we, have, we worked really well together. He's my dearest friend in the world. <laughs> so we're thinking, well, we make soup and we write songs. So, you know, why not have a, a, a musical cooking show? And it's not- well, Vaco has been saying this for like two years, like we yeah. should do soup and a song. It's like, we'll make a soup and when it's simmering, we'll play a song and we'll record this video and we can have soup and a song. Yeah, so this like is a, the perfect a time to do that. But we were always so busy. It's like, I mean, in 2019, I bet we played almost 200 shows. Oh, easily. So it's like, well, yeah, someday. And then it's like pandemic. It's like, well, we got, we got some time. We got the time. It, I think well, people will really enjoy it. You know, I've been listening to a lot of Bob Ross recently. So and we're gonna listening to. We're, we're watching. Well, I fell asleep to him. And we're going to put across the screen all the ingredients right now. <laughs> so are you going to make it so that people can follow along like an it's actual actually- cooking show? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. We have cooking Love shots that. and cutting up stuff. And like, first thing we do, we wash our hands. Because everybody should wash their hands before they cook. And which so, is what people should be doing anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, I've been, I've been watching a lot of Bob Ross. He's got to get his stick down, different cooking shows. And there's actually... Bob Ross is not a cooking show. I know, but he's got a great <laughs> delivery. He's so kind. And he's, such a, he's, he's so positive, man. And now we're going to add a happy little turnip. Exactly. And some happy little got some happy little rutabagas. And some happy turnip greens. We're we're having fun, you know. We don't we don't we don't take ourselves too seriously. No. So keep an eye out for soup and a song. So there are a bunch of people tuning in tonight and possibly in a future recording, and some of them might already know and love you. Some of them might be hearing you for the very first time and they're like, you know what, kind of dig this band. So for the people who are trying to find your music, where do they go to listen to it? And then if they choose to like financially support Woodblind as a band, where do they go to buy your album? Well, our huge media footprint is basically Facebook. Well, and <laughs> right. CD Baby. Yeah. CD Baby iTunes, or iTunes or the streaming services. You can Spotify. even do Spotify or We're all you know, but maybe you can find us and come to a small venue somewhere hopefully soon and we actually still have those weird old-fashioned cds too yeah yeah that's but <laughs> back when dinosaurs ruled the earth remember those <laughs> but we have the other stuff too you can yeah, you digital. can stream it or download it yeah or you know if you want like i said we youtube we, we follow our facebook page so message us and we'll send you one <laughs> so as, as we kind of discussed at the beginning um woodblind is usually just you two can you tell us about your your friends with you here tonight. Sure. Well, people are playing with us. Well, yeah. Tyler. Tyler Dubla was an old West Duluth buddy. James known this guy for years. Yeah, he's years. awesome drummer. He was in Space Carpet and 
I mean, he's been in a ton of bands. He's awesome. Plays with Tico Lex. He's a, a really good friend. Uh, Eli Bissonette, which pl he plays with Vaco so, in a jazz project. I had a, um, well, occasionally when there were still gigs, live gigs, I had a uh, gypsy jazz trio, you know, jazz of the 20s and 30s with Billy Bernard. And uh, Eli was playing violin, kind of doing the Joe Venuti parts on that. And uh, oh. Jimmy Cooper, who's a living legend here, is mm -hmm. really, really great guitar player. He's played with Dance every Addict and... Yeah, and everybody else. Solo, you know? way back. He was on the, the live albums the, I put the, out. He was... The Dukes of Hubbard. Dukes of Hubbard. He was on one week. He was on the volume one. Yeah, oh, one week God. live. So the very first one, he was on that. Yeah, and then uh, Brian. Brian. Brian Johnson. Playing, playing congas with Lefty. us. And we, you know, just he's a great player. And he's, he, he, I think he saw us once and he loves playing reggae. He's just awesome. Yeah. He's, he's really, my neighbor. He's a really fun he's guy. He's only come over in a storm. If it's a crazy thunderstorm and I get up at one in the morning to go watch the lightning, it's most likely Brian is going to show up with a cocktail. Oh, you're up too. It's, <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. He's yeah. So these guys are all our friends, and they're all really great players. And We're forgetting someone, aren't we? Uh, no, that's everybody. Sometimes Jen West. Uh, I wish Jen was coming. We should ask her. Yeah, we, we still could. We still could. But sometimes she sings back up, and she has a, really a great, wonderful voice. She sings harmonies all over the album, and yeah. she's a great friend. Yeah, you know, so we like to, when, when, there, when we have the ability, we like to bring every, as many people as we can. Like I said, Trish and these car bands are actually rather large. So part of it's like I said, it's budgetary constraint. But in, the, in this situation, we wanted to put our best foot forward and really present all the songs as we hear them when you know when we write them. And also, we send a message out to everyone, and they all said yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my questions was whether or not you chose to invite more people to this album because of the sound or because they were your friends who happened to be really talented musicians. And it sounds like it's it's both. Oh. Yeah, yeah, both, you know, both. It's sometimes when you get into production, you write a song, hear it, and then you, in instance, is one of the songs, Jimmy's a multi-instrumentalist. He plays mandolin, banjo, all these things. So one of the songs, he does a solo. And the first time he shredded it on guitar, the next time he pulled out his mandolin. It's like, dude, he just played the shreddle-in. Like, <laughs> Whoa, man. He's got some Frank Gambale going on there, man. It's but like, to, be, to be truthful, we went to Rich... We went in that snowstorm to record a part of the album yeah. and it was like, well, we're going to have some full band stuff and then yeah. we're going to do some other things. We didn't think the whole album was going to be that way, but, but it, it was sounded, just so fun and, it sounded and, so and we liked good. it so much. It we sounds just, so good. We like yeah. it. So. Yeah. So that's, that's what came. It, it's nice to ha have other people outside the creative bubble so they can reflect and they can add some things too, you know? It's and like, cover me up. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you're front and center. There's only two of you. <laughs> exactly. I know. So like That's why it's nice. It's like everybody's put a little bit of a little bit of spice into the pot as we're cooking it up. See how I did that? That's called that's called soup a, in a song. Exactly. That's called an hour back, man. Bam. I that looks like churning some butter. A stir it, man. Stir it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh one of my favorite songs off of Bluebird Day is Summer Song, yeah. which features Jen West and Corey Kaufman. And yeah. not only because it's a really good song, um, I mean, the full album is full of really good songs, but it's the first song I heard. And that was because of a very unique, at least at the time, music video. Can you tell us about making of the music video for Summer Song? Sure. Well, you know, back this early spring or I, every morning I come and get a cup of coffee from my friend Jason. We go to the drive through here and we're sitting there thinking like, what can we do? Because we had this song I just, I just written. It was like a last minute song. It wasn't on the record. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like, well, why don't we record it on our phones and edit it together? And that's what we did. I mean, we, we recorded Below the Cafe and it was the only song on the record that wasn't recorded with Rich and... Yeah. It, it was like our own little, it was like a afterthought, but yeah. Vago had this cool song. We were in the garage and we kind of worked it up yeah. and we're like, well, it'd be cool if Corey came over. And then Jen probably was like driving through the drive through. You want to sing on it? And yeah. it's like the way things go. It's like it's magic, happy accidents. And, and then, well, how do we, and then our other friends, a videographer, and he's like, I'll help you do it. If you guys just shoot your own videos, send them to me. 
because no one's going anywhere. So yeah. yeah, so it was all it was all done remotely, which yeah. was which was pretty crazy actually. Yeah, Carl Sauer is amazing. He helped us out and he he took all the information and we just gave him the recording and he took all our iphone videos he did and the syncing and he everything. did it all so and it, it, it came was, out it came out really really happy with the uh how it worked out and you I, don't even know what you're gonna get because you're like doing your own it's it's weird it's like a selfie video it's like right. it seems super dumb but then when you see it all together it's like well that's not so dumb that's, yeah i can i can live with that <laughs> i mean a, lots of artists right now are trying to be creative in the constraints of the way the world is right now and that's you know it's like zoom who knew what zoom was before the pandemic it was a little right. now it's like huge and stuff you know and that's a lot of you know especially artists musicians are evolving what their craft is to adapt to these new situations that's you know that's that's all right man it's 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 yielding some cool things for us for that's sure. awesome i didn't realize that that was an like a an added on later yeah. on yeah, yeah. It, was, it was an add-on i we finished the album. Actually, I came up with it a lot, probably fall, about a year ago this time. It's like Vaco wrote, he kind of had this idea for the song after we recorded the yeah. album. And I don't know, we just really liked it. And we started playing it live with the band. Yeah. That's a lot, of, a lot of songs we do, we'll write and then we'll play it a bunch of times so it evolves a little bit and we get to doing our thing. And, I, and it was I, fun to bring Corey because Corey's... Corey Kaufman's so fun to jam with, and Jen West is so, and she 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 was over actually she was over singing harmonies, yeah, because she couldn't come to Sparta, so she was over doing all the other harmonies that she sang. Yeah, down in the basement. Down in the basement. <laughs> so you know, I I've been listening to like a lot. There's a, a '60s Latino rock group called uh, Malo, from Los Angeles, and I've been listening to a lot of that, and I kind of wanted to write something like that with very up and kind of almost a Latin feel to it. And it, it, you know, Scoggles Latin is a real, is a real thing. So, coming from a German and a Finn. From Berlin, <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? German Finns go Latin, Ska. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of weird things in Duluth music here. <laughs> I loved it. I remember that it came out relatively close to the beginning of quarantine, yeah. and it was like this happy little song that came out, and I got to see all of you and you obviously got to perform together but apart yeah and i loved it 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 totally it totally made my the beginning of quarantines it felt like oh we can do this together like it'll be fine yeah I mean, that's why it kind of happened yeah and it's like you know it's really it's really easy in these times to be really depressed and stuff and you know i try to explain to people Humanity has overcome all incredible things. We've we've crossed the, the widest oceans, the highest mountains, the farthest deserts. We've traveled to other worlds. We can overcome this. Mm -hmm. Well, like thank you. Moment from Woodlawn. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, and I'm excited to watch the second half of the show. And do we know what song is coming up next? You named it earlier. Summer song. Yeah. Summer song. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. And back to the music. Nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This is a summer song. We'd like to dedicate it to the girl with the smiling eyes. You know what that <laughs>
That was fun. We did that song on the record. Uh, these guys weren't on that. It was an afterthought, but I like that version Very just much. fine. Well, Jason, let's play another one. Yeah, this goes out to all our friends out there brewing those good beers, those good ciders, even those root beers. Me and Vaco, we're getting a little bored during COVID, so we have this idea for soup and a song and a cooking and music show. 
we've gone as far to take these cool shirts, these Guayaveras, and we took two of our oldest ones, and our friend Darren Wallace made them into aprons. They look great. And uh, that's about as far as we got. But we're going to try to this make some soup, play some the, songs. This is the theme song. Yeah, this is the theme song. We did record this. <laughs> in my head now. Take two. I have to load it. It's it's loading. I'm point one. <laughs> We love this town. We love Duluth. We're so happy to be here. This song, Jason wrote about it. The Zenith City of the Unsalted Sea. With Sonny and a broken down dodge where I lost my phone. I'll scratch the towels over the skis, having a fight. I'm back with the ski bumps underneath the heat light. Everywhere I go, I always wanna be in my Zenith city. Um, so did see everywhere I go, I wanna be in my Zenith city.
Wanted to give a big shout out to to uh, the Mitchell Brian for uh, inviting us out and uh, everyone who's helping with the sound and the video and a quick shout out to this fun band that we never get together anymore: Jimmy Cooper on guitar, Eli Bissonette on violin, that's Tyler Duba on drums, Brian Johnson on percussion, my friend Vaco Lopisto, I'm and Jason. Jason Wusso. And uh, we're so happy to be here. And we'd like to dedicate to all you out there in TV land because you are. Magnificent.
Thank you, guys. This is a blast.